Hey guys, this is the Joe Jaguar Show, and today I need Joey's hand here. We're gonna do a video. This is for new people, right? Who just got a telescope and they don't know how to work it. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys uh, what the, uh, basically there's two different kinds of, uh, I guess, tripod telescopes. It's either an equatorial mount, and there's different sizes of those, and then there's altazimuth mount telescopes. And I'm gonna start with the altazimuth uh, telescopes, and there we go. Okay, Joey had enough. So anyway, so we're gonna start with the altazimuth. Now, there are some altazimuth that are altazimuth one and altazimuth two, or AZ1 or AZ2, it's short form. Don't bother with those kind. Those kind have zero slow motion controls, and they are very small. I recommend that you only get from the AZ3, so it's basically the Altazimuth 3, and in the last several years, they came out with an AZ4 or is AZ5. So anything between the three and the five is where you wanna be. Now, as far as a uh, equatorial mount, I'll get to that in a, in a minute. Now, this is, a 90 millimeter refractor f11 on an az3 so what that means what's nice about the az3 4 and 5 let's say is you can just point it in any actually i'm just going to bring that camera a little lower So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, what's nice about an AZ3 mount is you don't have the 10 pound counterweight here. Uh, this type of mount head is uh, probably half the weight of an EQ, uh, let's say an EQ2 mount head without the gears and um, th that type of thing. So it is a lot lighter, probably about 14 pounds lighter an AZ3 to an EQ2. Um, what's nice about it though too, it does have slow motion controls right here. So you can, as you can see, I, with one control goes up and down. And then I'm not sure if you can see this one, but this control, uh, unless I, this control makes it go in this direction. So one goes up and down, one goes left and right. So it's kind of like up, down, up, down. It's kind of like stairs. Now, what's nice is if there's an object in this part of the sky, you can just go here, find it, and then just, here's the locking, and then you can start, uh, you can fine tune it, look in the eyepiece, there you go. If there's something in this part of the sky, same thing, you just point it to there and start looking. So it doesn't matter what part of the sky it is, with an altazimuth mount like this, like an AZ3, you just, point to it and uh, you can manually slow motion control with these and just start looking. It doesn't, your orientation does not matter. So that's what's good about it. It's much easier to control. Um, you don't need to kind of set it or pull or align or there's no gears or there's no tilt angles. Uh, you just point and look. So it doesn't matter what part of the sky is at. It's also, you know, two thirds less the weight. Um, there's only one downfall. Now, our sky does not move in up and down motions like that, like as stairs. Our sky moves in more of a arc like that. The planets, the sun, the moon. So the downfall of these, or higher power, it's going to just, the tracking is going to be a little bit uh, not as precise as like an equatorial one uh, type of thing. But it is much, much easier to use for new people. And if you just want to do quicker sessions, that type of thing, um, this could be all that you need. Now, you can't put a motor drive like you can in an EQ mount. Well, you can't like put a drive and let it track itself. So again, the AZ3, 4, and 5, is you, you don't have to worry about any angles. It's half the weight or even less than half the weight. Uh, you have the slow motion controls. And like I said, just point and look. So that's all you really need to do. Now... The EQ models are a bit tougher, so I want to show that to you guys next.
Now, let me put this away. Okay, guys, so here is an EQ2. Now, this is a new version EQ2, and what I mean by that is two things. The new EQ2s have a more of a steel tripod versus an aluminum tripod. Also, this one here has like a Vixen uh, dovetail, which means you can just swap this out in like literally three seconds, where most EQ2s are the old version, which means that you have to um, unthread the rings, take your telescope, and your rings always stay on the mount. And if you want to take out the rings and swap another telescope, you have to get pliers, take the, the bolt right off, take the next one. So it's a lot harder or it takes longer. Um, so this, again, is the, the newer kind. Um, okay, so the first thing that you have to do is now... Hopefully you guys assembled it. Should look something like this, roughly, okay? And the telescope, um, and this is for a friend of mine that I just met today. I think his telescope was something, uh, we're, let me flip it all around. His was pointing more like that way, which is wrong, right? So you want the eyepiece here to be facing like over that counterweight. So it should be this way. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so here's the first thing you gotta do. So once you guys erect it or put it together, um, then that's what it should look like. Now there's a couple things that you have to uh, do. First thing is let's do the latitude. Now I'm in Toronto, um, so latitude here is 43 north. If you guys don't know where your city is, Google it, you'll find out and put that part here. I'm gonna get you closer right now. Okay guys, hopefully you guys can see that. I'm pretty sure you can. So this is your latitude. So again, let's just say it, come, it comes from the box and it's set for about 18 degrees. Now, unless you live at 18 degrees, that would be fine. But again, whatever degrees you're at is what, what you're gonna set it at. So this is the first thing you have to do is, and actually, if you uh, want, you could have the uh, no counterweight on here and no telescope before doing this. I mean, you could do it with it. And as you can see, I'm about 20 now. So I'm 43 uh, latitude north. So you just have to keep turning this part here till I get to 43. Now, as you can see, let's see if I can get you closer. Every mark on here is actually two. So, um, so you're not gonna get 100% perfect. And these little dials are, you know, it's not it's not the best uh, dials. But anyway, there you go. So I'm at 40 right now. Hopefully the camera is not angled. So 40. So the next tick is going to be 42. And then a little turn again. So I would say right about there, 43. That's it, guys. Okay, so we're back. So you have your telescope erected, okay? You have your latitude set for whatever uh, latitude you're at. I'm at 43, so I, I showed you guys how to put that 43. Your telescope should look like this. Your telescope should look, it should be over the counterweight, okay? Next step is let's balance this sucker, okay? So what you do is just loosen one, and you just turn it and you want it to be, you, you want to just check to see if it's balanced in every direction. Oh, let me just tighten this part down here. Okay, so as you can see, it's not, it's falling, which means the front is too heavy. On this axis it's fine, but over here, see, so the front is too heavy. So all I got to do is lock it down and see how much more space there is here compared to here. So what you do is just loosen it down and bring it a few inches down and try that again. Okay, there, so I moved it a few inches. So wherever I put this telescope, ah, see now what it's telling me, it's coming in this direction. So the mirror is a little bit too heavy on this side now. Now, 
that could change slightly if I have a heavier eyepiece on here. But um, actually, I'm going to raise this camera for a second. Okay, so the backside now is a little too heavy. So what I got to do again is just loosen this and raise it up. Now it's just a little bit. So just raise it up about an inch and try it again. Now, if you guys set this up in your uh, living room and the den or somewhere where it's going to be close to the backyard, you could have, once you set this up, then basically, and you just bring it outside through the door, you can have it set up. And then that way you never have to do that uh, as often. So again, you just there. So now whichever direction I put it, it should not move there. So as you can see, it is totally counterbalanced in this one direction. Next, let's counterbalance the other direction. So what you go is like this. Now let's just say my counterweight was all the way up here. Whoa. See, it basically is telling me the tube wants to fall over. So this counterweight is not far enough. So move it, let's say, to here. And again, it's still, the counterweight's not far enough. Move it a little bit more. There we go. So no matter what direction, now on this axis I do, it's not going to tilt over, right? So wherever I put it, it's balanced. There, that's done. Okay, next. Put that over here. Let me bring that down just a tad. Okay, so there we go. So you got your latitude done. You're, you're, you're balanced in both axes. Uh, and you should have enough weight to counterbalance. If you uh, have a smaller weight and you went all the way to the bottom and it's still not balanced, then you need a second counterweight. However, your telescope should already be, uh, should have already enough weight to counterbalance this, even if you change uh, an eyepiece uh, or anything like that. Okay, so here is the next thing you have to do. Okay, next thing you have to do uh, there's a couple things you actually you could do if you want. Let's talk about the finder scope and your eyepiece or your telescope and your finder scope being aligned. So this is, you do this once and it, it might seem backwards, but the first time you use it, what you do is you look, well, the focuser is on this side right now. If you guys want, I'll turn it around. So here's what you got to do. Put in your low power eyepiece in the, I mean, obviously I can make this go down, it's a little high, but I want you guys to see the mount head. So what you gotta do is maybe in the daytime, um, go outside, look for a light pole, a hydro pole, uh, something like that, that's, I don't know, a few hundred meters away to half a kilometer, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, put your low power eyepiece, which is the highest number. 25 is normally what you get with uh, a telescope sometimes 20 but whatever the lowest number eyepiece you have put it in and manually look for the light pole hydro pole the corner of a uh, building a chimney anything like that put it in the middle of the eyepiece and then uh, go to the finder scope and it doesn't matter if it's a red dot finder a more expensive telrad or rigel finder or one of these 5x24 or 6x30 finder, they should all, all have some type of controls that you, if it has a crosshair or a dot, is you want to look through it and make sure you're pretty much exactly wherever your eyepiece is. Now that's the first time you do it. Then in the nighttime, uh, do it again on a star. And again, just fine tune it where they're both looking at the same, you know, exact the same place. Once that's done, from then on, it's always the other way around. The reason why they call this a finder scope, because it helps you find objects. But initially, you have to align it to the main telescope. So the first time you have to, or if you ever uh, take this completely out, then you'll have to do this step first. You look through the telescope and make sure whatever you want to see is in your eyepiece. 
and then fine tune the finder so that they're both looking at it. And then from then on, as long as you don't move it, you, you normally look through your finder scope and then your eyepiece after that. But as your first time, you have to do it this way, which is in reverse. Um, anyway, okay. So hopefully you guys understand that. Now, an equatorial mount, like I said, it tracks more in arcs type of things. Everything in the sky moves in like an arc. So it, it is harder to learn an equatorial mount because of that, but it also has some, some benefits that once you learn how to use it, right, then it's actually easier to control. But a lot of people don't realize this whole step here. Um, and again, they probably don't realize your latitude. So anyway, next thing you have to do is you got to know which way is north, right? Um, and I do have a video called how to po polar align your telescope. And basically you have to look for the north star. Um, anyway, if you, want, if you guys want to watch that video, but I'm not going to get too much into it. You got to find the north star if you can. And what you want to do is this this axis right here is you want to pretend that this has an eyepiece because the bigger mounts, the bigger mounts here, so this here, this rod right here, you pretend, uh, you try to point at, at Polaris or the North Star. Now, if you have no idea what's the North Star and you don't even know the Big Dipper or you can't see it, which is okay, because I'm gonna show you guys from my backyard, I actually, have 180 de degree view of the south, I can't even see the north. So I'll show, you, I'll show you guys. Okay, so as you guys can see, my complex, this is the north. So there's no way that I could see the north star at all. Okay, what you could do is just get a compass and like this one, it's pointing the north is actually like that way, not over here. It's more like that way. Same in this guy here. So the north is uh, like over there. So, so you can get a compass or what I just normally do, since I know that's north, south, west, and east, um, I know that north is about 15, 20 degrees like that. So what I do is I just point my mount that way and then that's good enough let me take you back in okay and as you guys saw i can't even see polaris or the north star at all so there's no way that i can point this axis to it but i know this is north but it's about 15 20 degrees north so all i do is point it like this and all my videos that i have done in my backyard that i if you guys go and see where I'm observing, I just do that. I plunk it down and it should be in this direction, you know, so this should not be pointing this way or south or west or east, it should be pointing north. I mean, if you get it closer to the North Pole or the North Star, then what's gonna happen is the tracking is gonna be more accurate. But anyway, since I can't see it and maybe a lot of you guys can't see it as well, you just point it north like this roughly and then that's it now what you have to do to observe now again remember it's a little bit higher than it should be it should be about uh, eight inches lower for me to really uh, observe but i want you guys to see the mount head so now what do you do like on the other video that i showed you guys uh how do you point it then north now you never move this like so you don't pick it up now and if the planet, because the planet, the sun, moon is, is on the south uh, sky, you don't turn this again. So you just loosen the knobs and then you turn it this way. Does that make sense, guys? Or maybe it doesn't. So that's how you look on the south like that. And you see how it's, in, it's moving in arcs. So if I want to look at anything there, I'm looking that way. Up, I'd be there again it'd be a little bit lower because it's just a tad high anything over there and again if I want to look at something on that side you just move it like that so it is awkward a little and you know some people on the forum so again I let go it's not even locked right but it should hold 
if it's balanced. Now, some people on the back on, on the forums say like, oh, like, for instance, like this. Uh, okay, if I I'm gonna put it lower so you guys can. You know, let me just lock it because now I'm gonna be moving the tripod. I'm gonna put it lower to a more uh, better height for me. Okay, just make the legs go lower. Okay, and there are people in the forums that would say, oh, equatorial mount uh, telescopes, the IP sometimes is in a weird angle like this. How am I supposed to look at it? I mean, it's, it's so straightforward. I don't know why they, they complain. Really, all you have to do, okay, is tighten down, loosen the rings, the thumbnails on the rings, and all you're gonna do is twist the telescope so I can view it. It's a no-brainer. I don't know why they, they say it's harder. Anyway, um, so let's say, uh, again, let me just move it. I'll put it in a weird angle. Uh, so let's say um, I wanted to view, you know, like that type of angle here. If that's the angle I wanted to view, again, if this eyepiece wasn't at a good height, loosen the rings, twist this guy to a better, uh, you know, and then you just focus. So whatever angle it's on, being an equatorial mount, say like here, if I want to look over there, again, it's at a weird angle. Again, you just loosen the rings, twist it, and now I can view. So really, you never touch this mount once it's looking north. You only move the telescope on those both axes. Hopefully that makes sense. And what that does is let's say I'm looking at a planet on the south side here. Uh, so let's say, okay, I'm looking at Saturn or Jupiter here. Again, that's a weird angle. Just move this down. Now, what that means is if, even if you don't have motors or anything, when you're tracking, you're only going to be tracking on one of these controls instead of two because you're mostly polar aligned. Now, if you can get really close to the North Star and just uh, the more expensive mounts have an eyepiece here where uh, it's something like an eyepiece where then you can put the Polaris or the North Star directly in the eyepiece similar to here. And then you almost never have to move the second um, control at all maybe once every 20 minutes or whatever. So the further you're off, you are off, the more you're gonna have to touch it. But in, um, but in practice, it's only gonna be one that you're gonna be tracking on as the planet moves in the eyepiece. So that's what's good about an equatorial mount. So again, with all my videos, I just point this kind of north. It doesn't even have to be that close. I could probably be five, six, seven degrees off because I can't even see it. You could use a compass as I showed you quickly, just point it north. And then if you know, um, you know, if, if, you, if you know the offset, if it's 10 degrees uh, difference, uh, 15, 20, whatever it is, you can just move your mount slightly in that direction. And that's good enough for visual. Again, you might, on the second control, you might need to move it once every three or four minutes, one small little turn. But in general, it's just going to be that one that you're going to be mostly handling. Now, later on, you can, uh, let me just reset this guy. Later on, if you find you want to upgrade this guy, this wheel here, let me see, I'll get you guys closer. So this big wheel right, a little lower, right here. You can put like a motor drive on here and then that way it's going to be moving this telescope by itself one turn every 24 hours or it's going to be keeping up with the planet as it's moving. So that's what's good about a equatorial mount that you have that option later on. However, I find manually tracking is really not, not that big of a deal. The only time that it makes some sense is if you're showing like three, four, five people, um, you know, that type of thing, where 
then you're always, you know, you, and you don't want to keep on moving. That's where, you know, everybody can look and no one has to worry about touching the controls mostly. Uh, they just have to worry about actually just focusing and that's and looking. So, but if it's just yourself or one other person, it's not a big deal. Remember too, the higher power you go, the faster the object is going to be moving because you're actually you're looking at a smaller point in, in space. So the object's gonna be moving uh, or seem to be moving at a faster rate. So at lower powers, it's not a big deal. It's once you become to about 150 power, uh, the object might you know, move in the field of view in like 60 seconds, which is not bad. At about 200 uh, power, it's gonna probably be about um, 40 seconds and so on and so on. 250, it might be like 30 seconds. Now, what's what's neat about, um, actually, I'm gonna show you guys on my bulletin board. Okay, what's nice about also a um, motorized tracking is that, or an EQ mount, another thing that's good now, let's say here's the eyepiece, your field of view. Now, on an equatorial mount, remember, everything tracks at, like on an angle. So even without tracking uh, that type of thing what i sometimes do if you're a high power like 200 250 or anything like that where it's going to be moving 20 to 30 seconds um, if you want a little bit more time um, because the best views usually in the eyepiece is going to be more in the center not really in the edge of the field of view so what i like to do is if you're mostly polar aligned or even if you're semi-polar aligned, as long as it's pointing north, what I like to do, let's say you have the planet Saturn uh, here, what I do is I put it on the edge. I put it on the edge and then it's going to be, tr it's going to be moving, let's say like that. Now what's neat, hopefully you guys can see that. Hopefully what, um, let me get closer. So then what happens is once it gets to about over here, let's say almost out of the way, I just use, you just use that one control and put it back on the edge. And then slowly, you, so basically you have more time. So basically, because if you're polar aligned, you're only moving on one axis uh, or one slow motion control, which means you know exactly which control to use. And basically you never lose it. Even if you lose it, and the item becomes, you know, if, if let's say Saturn is over here, right? You only, you, you know which control to use and you can just bring it back. Where if you were to do that on an Altazimuth mount, it's, it's not going to be moving in an arc. You know what I mean? So, which means it could be like down here or in another weird angle. You're not going to know once you lose it, you have to go back down to ultra low power, low power, medium power, high power. So that, that's what's good about doing out an equatorial mount is you just, if you want a little bit more time, put it on the edge, your whatever planet or object you're looking at it. And then uh, again, if you're at higher power, it's going to be going. It just gives you more time because if you were to put your object in the center and if it's, if, if you're at like 250 power and it takes 20 seconds, if it's already in the middle, really you only have 10 seconds. So by the time you let you know if there's any vibrations by the time you let that settle you might only have five seconds before it's gone so it's neat to put the object right at the edge and then you have more time before it leaves your field of view hopefully that makes sense okay guys so that is how you work an altazimuth mount and an equatorial mount and it doesn't matter let's say an equatorial mount if it's an eq three four five it doesn't matter. It's all the same uh, movements. The only thing different about the EQ3, 4, 5, and so on is that you could put an eyepiece inside the mount uh, head and then you can sight Polaris or the North Star and then you're a bit more accurate. But if you don't have that model, that's okay. As long as you point this axis to the North Star, Polaris, then you're okay. And again, if you don't, if you can't even see it, just point it north and then move your telescope south and start looking. It is easier with tracking at higher power and EQ mount. But as you see, there's a lot of angles and balancing that you have to do. And it is a bit more heavier. But once you get used to that, it is easier 
because you can push the power further and further uh, or higher and higher and you know, okay, it's only this one axis I'm, I'm tracking on, so it's easier to keep that item in the field of view much longer. And later on, if you want, you can buy, it's like a $70 clock drive, then once you put it, you know, attach it on, that item or planet is gonna be in the field of view for 20, 30, 50 minutes, an hour, and you don't have to use any controls, almost. You might just need to tweak it once every dozen uh, minutes or so, and that's it. That's how you use an equatorial mount. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys know anybody that's interested in science, astronomy, has a telescope uh, or binoculars, anything like that, share my channel with them, uh, with them, and like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you guys on the next video. Joe out.